the standard technology we have at the moment is, of course, usernames and passwords. And so what the things that we saw is that where there was an authentication mechanism, hackers are nothing if not stupid. Um, and the moment there was an authentication mechanism, we would see brute forcing attacks coming in. And all the brute forcing attack is, is it is somebody trying to repeatedly guess your password. So they come along to a system and they say, hello, I'm Fred, password Fred. Hello, I'm Fred, password Fred1. Hello, I'm Fred, password Fred2. And computers can do this a thousand times a second, and so can get through lots and lots of passwords. And let me just illustrate how vulnerable we all are with this. Be honest, okay, we're not going to vote on it, but be honest. Hands up those people whose password is a word. That's bad, okay? Uh, dictionaries are out there, okay? Now one for the techies. Hands up if your password is Klingon. <laughs> no, the Klingon dictionaries out there. Hands up if your password's Elven. We have a dictionary for Lord of the Rings. Nobody? Hands up if your password is a word with a mangle in it. And what I mean by a mangle is you take the letter I and you substitute it for one, or you take the letter S and you substitute it for five. A few? Yeah, you see there are dictionaries for those as well. Um, so you get the idea, okay? And also, web app attacks. If you're running a web server, they're going to have a pop at you. Okay, can guarantee it. So, on to the interesting bits. How did it break down? Um, creative industries got 14% of the, the attacks. Academia got 14% of the attacks. Public sector, 6%. Manufacturing, 7%. Aerospace, 2%. Hmm, interesting. Um, bioscience, 4%. Hmm. ICT services, 7%. And they're after data centers. And services, 46%. What on earth is going on here? Uh, we have a theory about services. And our theory about services is that hackers are starting to think and to realize that those people with intellectual property, aerospace, bioscience, pharmaceutical, things like that, recognize and have seemed to have woken up to the fact that they need to protect their intellectual property. If you take bioscience as an example, um, we had Ed up this morning. The FBI take this so seriously, bioscience and pharmaceuticals, they've created a special division of the FBI to advise the pharmaceutical industry on cybercrime and to help the pharmaceutical industry. Why? Think how much the cure for AIDS is worth. Okay, never mind that. Now think how much the cure for the common cold is worth. We live in a world where it's first past the post wins in terms of patents. Therefore, if I can break into your system, steal some information, combine it with information that I have and patent it, I win. How are companies in Wales going to get themselves out of this financial mess we find ourselves in at the moment? It's through wealth creation to generate, to generate and to deploy IP, intellectual property. And that has to be protected. Now, those organizations, whether it's manufacturing or things like that, are waking up to this. And hackers are not stupid. Okay? There are some very, very bright hackers out there, some very, very clever individuals. And so we think what's happening here is that rather than going for kind of the front door, what they're doing is suppose I want to break into um, an aerospace company or a bioscience company. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the supply chain around that company to see who they're doing business with. Why? Because we have this concept called the electronic supply chain, and it goes like this. I want to place an order. Rather than do it with paper and pencil and things like that, I'm going to do it via an online system, because it's going to be quicker. It's going to be faster. If I'm a manufacturing company, it's all, in it's all about just-in-time supply management. And so what these hackers are doing is they're looking for the support services and companies out there that provide supports to these big companies, and they're targeting those companies. Why? Because if I can break into a second or third tier supply chain, I can start messing around and try and work my way up the supply chain to actually the big fish. Because supply chains tend to work on trust. Okay? We trust X. Why? 
don't really know why, but we trust them because we do business with them. They seem to be okay. Actually, that trust relationship can be exploited. And what happens when that trust relationship is exploited? One of the best examples we have actually happened in 1944. And it was the way that the Allies dealt with the threat of the U-boats in the North Atlantic. Bletchley Park had broken the Shark Enigma code, and they knew where the supply boats were going to be that were supplying diesel, torpedoes, and food to the German U-boats. Because if you could disrupt that, right, without no diesel, without no petrol, your car don't run. So if I can disrupt the supply of these things, I can effectively neutralize the threat, which is what they did. Now, they did it quite cleverly because they realized if they just started bombing where the supply boats were, that the Germans were very quickly going to figure that the shark code had been cracked and would change things, and that would set everything back. So what they did, this is an aside, was they sent out a little spotter plane. And the role and object of the spotter plane was not to spot where the supply boat was going to be, because they knew that. Rather, it was to be seen by the supply boat, so if there were any suppliers, when they sent out a bunch of Lancasters to bomb the crap out of the area, um, that the suppliers would say, oh, the British are getting really lucky. Right, there, was a, there was a spot plane came along, they spotted us and they bombed us. And that was how they neutralized the threat. But they did it via manipulating the supply chain. The lessons we draw from that is that if somebody starts getting inside your supply chain, they can start wreaking havoc. A, to financially damage a company, right, but also to break into those other systems.